I'm Kara O'Donnell and this is County Board Wrap Up, the monthly program where we take an in-depth look at the key actions the board takes at its monthly meetings. Today I'll be talking with Board Chair Christian Dorsey as well as Vice Chair Libby Garvey about the decisions the board took at its May meeting, decisions that are going to have an impact on you, your neighbors, and our community. Libby and Christian, welcome. Thanks for joining us as always. Let's dive right in with the action on accessory dwellings. We've been talking about this kind of on and off yeah. here and there on towards several different actions over right. several years. Yeah. What's this latest move? Well, the latest is a pretty big deal. We have uh, yes. now the ability for people to construct new detached buildings, so buildings not a part of their existing residence, and to make them available for use as a dwelling for up to three people. So prior to this action, uh, people had the ability to utilize space within their own existing homes. So we liberalized it so that yeah, you could that use last year. your entire basement, for example, mm -hmm. for accessory use. And then um, we allowed for the ability for existing uh, detached buildings to be converted to accessory use. Now we've uh, made that process easier and then also allowed for the very first time you can construct a new building for an accessory use uh, provided that it meets some key requirements yeah. that we set at our meeting. Yeah, and one of the issues last year when we were looking at it is that ex you can use existing buildings, and that made sense. There's something there, you should be able to use it. But existing buildings include garages, which can be like one foot, basically right on the, the property line. Right. And we realized if we use that same standard for people to construct new, you know, people could have their yard and suddenly find their neighbors putting something like right there, and we didn't feel really comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So we went back and did some study and looking at it and actually settled on five feet um, so that there is some space, and you can get plantings in there, you can move a lawnmower through and things like that. Um, so that was sort of what the major crux was, I think, of our discussion. Indeed. So are we talking kind of like the, the old in-law quarters, as they used to be yes. called, type thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are these accessory dwellings, kind of renovating the garage or something like that? That's or, right. Yeah, or building something new that, okay. looks, yeah. that, that looks nice. You know, and one of the other issues is that our, 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 our zoning code requires eight feet of separation between the main building and the accessory building. Um, and then we started to wonder, how is this accessory building going to affect trees? That was actually one of the things that came into okay. this, which I think years ago when we started talking about it, people weren't thinking about trees a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, but there's concern that somebody would like, you know, to, in order to build a thing, will cut down trees. And plus with that five feet, and then you can go to the the, the, the zoning zoning board and ask for, um, you know, is it a waiver? A is that what? Variance, variance, thank you, yeah. if that's the right, correct word. A variance to do less than the eight feet. Um, we want to make sure people understand that, and particularly for a good reason, like there's a beautiful tree here. We want to keep that tree. If we move a little closer to the house, we can keep the tree. Okay. Um, and that's how we're hoping that people will, will use this, just to be a little more sensible about what they're doing, able to preserve what's kind of there that we want to keep, like trees. And this is just really our attempt. You know, our zoning ordinance was created for the first time in 1950. And the way people live and their needs today, very right. different. Arlington's right. changed quite Arlington a bit since the 50s. The yes. world has changed. <laughs> yes. So this yes. is really just one step in providing a different range of options, which can really serve a variety of public policy goals. Mm -hmm. This can allow uh, options for people who are older, mobility impaired, maybe um, you know this is a form of supplemental income, maybe they in fact inhabit the accessory dwelling by, while renting out the main house. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this becomes a way for people to, you know, get in on the Arlington rental market in a way that's a little less expensive than it is, for example, living in a, a high-rise apartment. So this range of options, you know, I think we yeah. believe is, is what's going to allow our community to grow comfortably. Yeah. Well, you know, and even an added thing is you could have, like, an older people, they could continue to live in their home, but have, you know, someone who helps them out. In the smaller, I mean, sure. it, people's lives are so different, yeah. all different, and it, this is just to add flexibility to help people do what they need to do to live here in Arlington. Was there any concern about this kind of changing the character mm -hmm. of the single-family oh, yeah. neighborhoods? Indeed, Th that was certainly a concern that we heard from people, uh, and I think uh, this solution, if you will, what we did was really responsive to a lot of those concerns. Is as Libby mentioned, five feet away from the property line is significantly different than one. Um, and that's something that we think is, is important for uh, a neighbor's house. Uh, but it's also important really to maintain the integrity of that accessory dwelling. If you're only one foot away from someone else's fence, you really can't maintain that right. building, right? So <laughs> this really kind of makes sense um, from a public policy standpoint. And in terms of character, you know, the funny thing is we have this we have this dynamic in many Arlington neighborhoods. People have accessory buildings up to one foot away from the property line. So for people who are going to be building new, in fact, 
it's not going to be functionally any different. In fact, we think it's going to be improved because it's yeah. going to be better placed on lots. And as Ms. Garvey said, it's hopefully going to allow for the preservation of trees either on your property or on your neighbor's property. So we, we think that this is a, a good way to, to, to move forward. That said, we'll study it. We'll see how it happens. Yeah, absolutely. And, right. you know, lot coverage still, still, still you know, the, all of the rules we've got there, that still will obtain. It's, it's possible people will build slightly smaller houses instead Michael. of a big, huge one. <laughs> yeah, mine too. And then a small, you know, unit behind and instead of one big, huge monster house. So, you know, we'll see how it works. Um, but I, it would seem really important to get some flexibility and allow just a lot of different ways of doing things. So and how we'll does see. this all fit in with the Housing Arlington Initiative that a lot of people mm -hmm. are talking about mm -hmm. these days? Well, indeed. Uh, and when you talk about one of our key challenges with affordable housing, it's really that there's not enough uh, diversity in our housing types that could be affordable for people at different price ranges. You know, if most of your new construction is either a teardown of an existing home and mm -hmm. building a huge home in its place or a luxury development on a metro line 20, 20 stories up that rents for $3,000 a month, Where wh what's, the, what's the new stock for people who are not in either one of those scenarios? Yeah, right, yeah. And we've had very little. And, and this is a way to get some of that, uh, that housing stock. Now that said, we're not going to see thousands of these overnight since we've had accessory right. dwellings uh, as, as an allowed uh, use of your home. We've only had somewhere around 30. So we're not yeah. talking about right significant numbers to scale, but anything that we can do to create more options is better than we would have sure. been And a lot of times nothing. a younger couple, they're, they're having, it's tight to do the mortgage, they'll buy, and then they can rent out, you know, either the dwelling in, inside the unit or the one in back, which helps cover their, their mortgage, which is two things. It helps them live here and have, have housing, and it helps the people here have a reasonable rent to stay someplace. Exactly. It's, yeah. So, I think it's good. We're gonna we'll we'll, keep, we'll continue to study it, and I think Christian's right. It's not going to be like this massive. Right. Explosion. We're not going to have a whole new city of tiny houses. No. <laughs> right. No. Right. And we didn't say anything goes. So it, I, you know, we'll, and we'll continue. We will continue to look at it and and and, and adapt as we need to. Okay. Well, uh, another big project, and this has also been one that we've been talking about quite a bit over the last six months, a year, what have you. Um, the swap with the for the Carlin Springs property from Virginia Hospital mm -hmm. Center. Mm -hmm. um, what was the action we took here to this? So this actually completes that deal. That process will now be done. Because <laughs> <Finally>. <laughs> we had the agreement with VHC for a uh, land swap, mm -hmm. and uh, this was an exchange of some county property in North Arlington across the street from the hospital. Um, they've exercised that option. Mm -hmm. They've gotten their plans for that site entitled. Mm -hmm. This is the last piece, and that is um, coming to terms on the final a transfer of sale between the Carlin Springs, Springs property located at 601 South Carlin Springs Road where the, the hospital urgent care used to be located. Right. That's now county property um, and we came to terms on the agreement which very much was a good deal for taxpayers. We were going to get the uh, appraised value of that property uh, offset by the uh, swap of the land Tough in North line. Arlington. And what this means is that the county gets a valuable piece of property uh, on Carlin Springs Road plus an additional four and a half million dollars um, in cash um, that, that makes it square. So uh, this is a great thing where we've got something we need valuably, uh, we need desperately yeah, yeah, land yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, 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 yeah. extra cash. Yep. Always and then the Virginia Hospital said there's that urgent care center. They need to, have to provide some urgent care, you know, in South oh. Arlington, so a little bit, so that doesn't just completely go mm -hmm. away. But and that's been a, a natural concern for folks. And and then we have this property, and the question is, what to I was do just with it? Say, and so what are we going to do? So with it? we'll be embarking on a, on a process that part of it's in a riparian zone, a protection area, I think mm -hmm. it's called RPA. Mm -hmm. So you really can't build there. So we can probably improve that, connecting with the park, which I think will be good. But there's a lot of a lot of land there, and we've got a lot of different needs. So we will continue to look through and see what see what's there. But the building itself will go um, because that's that part of the issue with that is it's very it's I think it's a, a million or more a year just to keep running and it's not suitable for it's it's not in very good shape it needs to it needs to go okay so, so are, there, are there any kind of leaning you know areas that we may be looking at for that property is there anything that not as of yet so okay. the hospital will be able to occupy it until the end of this year right. they're leasing it back so that they can wind down their operations sure. so it won't be until the start of 2020 that we actually fully possess the property right. and that's right. when we'll we'll bring everything to grade because as Libby said those buildings are past their useful life they're not going to 
continue to be a part of how we utilize that site. So those will come down so that those don't create a, a public nuisance nor a hazard. So uh, we'll, we'll clear it and then we'll have a, a thoughtful engagement about looking at all of the needs that we have in the county and how this site might fit, fit within serving them. So more to come on that. Yeah, all right. Well, we will stay tuned on that one. But yeah, it seems that kind of a general theme today is growth and how the county is coping with it. You know, growth requires more land for public uses. So we're going to take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be asking the board about some more growth projects, the Knocktown Square, and then as well the sale of county bonds. Stay with us. Welcome back to County Board Wrap-Up. I'm Kara O'Donnell and we're talking today with Board Chair Christian Dorsey as well as Vice Chair Libby Garvey about the decisions the board took at its May meeting. Now we had a big decision continuing kind of our growth theme du jour um, <laughs> for the Ed Center uh, with APS. The what was former the former Ed Center. Now the former Ed Center. <laughs> yeah. The and project I'm, formerly known as the Ed formerly, Center. Exactly. And I'm happy to talk about that because, you know, I first got on the school board in 97, January of 97, mm -hmm. and before that I was quite active. So I've been going to that building for a long time. I remember when they were, like, before that, before the Ed Center got converted. Anyway, we're moving forward. It means a lot to me personally, but I won't go on, on about that too much. It, what's cool about it is the, what we call adaptive reuse. So it's an administrative building, um, and it had a lot of issues with the, I mean, it was built a while ago when we didn't worry about en energy, we didn't worry about it. So the building would get really hot because the windows weren't right. Okay. And of course, the, the, the floors are not set up for class space, which is what they need. It was set up for office. So the school system, you know, decided that they, they have moved to the SciFax Center, um, which is over off of Wilsh uh, Washington, Washington Boulevard, right, um, which is a great new, new facility for them. And so they had this building right next to Washington Lee, so they decided to convert it to classroom space, which they need. And that saves having to, like, construct a whole new building. I mean, adaptive reuse is just so good on so many different levels. So they went in and worked with a, we worked with it together. Um, there was a joint group looking at things, um, and we they put in they're putting in new windows. There was a little discussion about it being a historic building, and it kind of is. It's a very odd looking building with <laughs> with the planetarium there, but it's kind of cool. Um, and we very quickly decided that they were going to be true to the sort of the style. It's not going to look all that much different, but not absolutely slavishly true to it because if you would do that you couldn't have kids in there learning well. So we changed the windows, they're okay. going to change the windows and some things like that. So I'm excited to see it. I think it's going to be a great way to get about four, five, six hundred street seats for students back um, without building a whole new a whole new uh, building and not costing a whole lot of money either. It's now, clever actually. Does this mean that additional students will be going to Washington Lee or does this take some of the some current overcrowding and put some students in this building or how is that all going to work? So initially the plans are for this to add to the capacity at Washington, soon to be wa Washington, <coughs> Washington Liberty. Liberty. Right, right, right. So uh, that, that will have up to 600 more students. So that will just very much accommodate the need for seats. But the great thing about this building is uh, since it is a part of the WNL campus, but it is a self-contained building, it gives the school system options. If they want to think about academy models or other ways of delivering education to students of the future, they do have that flexibility. And aside from adaptive reuse being sustainable and more cost effective, I, I love the fact that it gives them a programmatic option right. that they right. wouldn't necessarily right. have. Just complete right. flexibility. That's right. Exactly. And, 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 whole separate structure That's there right. that will be top of the line with some of the renovations that will no, exactly. need to be done anyway. Now, what kind of impact will this conversion have on, if any, on the neighborhood itself? Well, that's always a detailed conversation yep. that we have Parking in Arlington. Parking and traffic we talk about <laughs> sure. a lot, a lot. And there was actually one of the things was on, along Quincy. Where are we going to do the pick up and the drop off? Mm -hmm. So trying to figure that out. Out. And at one point there was concern that if you do it on the curb, you're going to block the bike lanes that are coming back and forth. And so there was discussion about that. And, and should we do it in the back? And then the school staff and other people said, you know, wherever you do it, parents are going to do this anyway. <laughs> so you need to plan for that. And they came out actually separate, two separate kind of drop off places, which I think will work. But it was interesting, actually, watching our own staff, our own transportation staff, to have a view, way of view of doing mm -hmm. things, working with school and the school community, because parents and kids at school behave a little differently from people in office buildings and things. So, kind of getting those two cultures, kind of getting together to work out the best best way of doing it, was was great. It was great to see. It was a little bumpy at times, but it was good. And of course, um, the school you know school growth is something mm -hmm. we talk about. Mm -hmm 
all the time yeah. here on County Board Wrap Up, and it's it's a challenge for Arlington. How will some having this flexible space really help to achieve some of the goals we've had here? Well, the great thing is this can be delivered so much more quickly than building a new school from scratch. So this uh, Ed Center conversion will be ready for the 2021-2022 oh, school okay. year. So these are going to come online really quickly. So, you know, one of the issues is that we typically, um, you know, have to deal with overcrowding through use of relocatable structures and, you know, loss of, of, of green space in order to accommodate that growth. We're able to sort of bypass that step a little bit here by going straight to this facility. So I think this is a, a tremendous way to just really fully absorb the students and keep the programs that the students would be engaging in in, in an extracurricular fashion. Those are all going to be going on at the same time. So this is really going to bring capacity up to speed really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so this should uh, hopefully for the foreseeable future, uh, along with the investments that they're making at the Career Center site, and the growth of the Arlington Tech program, uh, this should really put the high school seats um, situation under control for the school system for the foreseeable future. Future. And I'm searching my memory, which is always a little unreliable. I believe this is the first time we've taken a building that was never really attended for school for student for use. classroom use and converting it. Um, and you know I, the school system we and we all are continuing. We're, we're, we're kind of helping them, looking for some adaptive, re some buildings that could be used this way, adaptive reuse we call it, in old office buildings possibly. Mm -hmm. Now it's tricky because there are requirements for schools that this one fits. So we'll we'll see. But it's I think it's just stretching the envelope a little bit about what our possibilities are. And in our 26 square miles, as we continue to grow and change. Flexibility is the coin of the realm, I right. think, It'll but we need to do it well. Pilot program, almost it's in, in a way, in a way, and yeah. it's going to be beautiful. I just love seeing this old building that was getting tired, going to be really freshed up and given a yeah. whole new life. It's exciting. exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, another exciting project um, going on with the Town Square Park in Knock, now Green Valley. Yeah. But we still don't know what the actual Town Square Park will officially right. be called at right. the end of the day. Yeah. But regardless, some contracts were awarded for that. So that is moving forward. Indeed. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, this is near and dear to my heart, Kara, <laughs> because uh, this town square in the neighborhood formerly known as Knock, <laughs> now Green Valley, was really conceived in the early 2000s, sometime around 2002. And it was part of a revitalization plan for. Uh, for Green Valley that was passed in 2004. Okay. So this has long been a desire for the community to take uh, 24th uh, Road, and 24th Street and, and South Shirlington Road. There's a, uh, a wonderful space that really fits as a town square for a neighborhood. Yeah. And to make that a, a public gathering place that uh, honored the community's history, honored African American history, but also served as a wonderful way to gather and passively recreate, actively recreate, all those good things. Um, so that was the dream, that was the vision, and here we are, and with the $5 million construction contract that we just awarded, it's going to be constructed very, very soon, beginning this summer. Wow, and, okay. um, that's exciting. You know, this is, it, it's, the community has, has helped design this. We had an award-winning landscape architect and, and artist who, who designed the installation, so this will very much be a community-centered and community mm -hmm. Um, design gathering space. Yeah. Now, what what are some of the things the community can look forward to? I mean, it's such a tight knit community. Yeah. Anyway, this is really exciting to have this kind of town square for yeah. as kind of a central gathering place. What are some of the highlights? What's the highlights reel? <laughs> well, there's going to be uh, a nice place for sort of uh, outdoor outdoor uh, concerts and oh, events. Okay. So there's mm -hmm. going to be a nice stage. Well, performance with, venue. Yeah, yeah, performance venue. Yeah. That's the yeah. great term. Yeah. A nice public plaza. Uh, that provides a lot of different ways for people to uh, sit, whether to enjoy performances or just to enjoy nature in the park. There is a, a, a public art component called Freed, which very much um, honors the uh, historic struggles of African Americans and some of the notable accomplishments and achievements that African Americans have made toward building this community. So that will be something that's a learning and teaching and visual tool for the community. And then, of course, um, you know, we take advantage of the built environment in Arlington. So uh, nearby, nearby streams will be honored with some of the vegetation and uh, the overall design. So this is a, this is a really cool thing. It's yeah. going to be really exciting to see this come to fruition exactly. and grow after a lot of discussion back and forth <laughs> yeah. for quite it's a few really years. Exciting.
Uh, but before we wrap up, and there were a lot of other kind of bond sales and mm -hmm. some creative financing agreements, shall we say, um, that were approved. Let's talk a little bit about those. So, you know, bond sales, I know they're exciting, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> thrilling. <laughs> thrilling. But, you know, let's think about what they are. You know, we, yeah. we authorized the sale of about $170 million in bonds, but it's not the, it's not the money per se. It's what, what we're buying. And these are voter-approved projects on both the county and the school side. And I, I'm not going to get the whole list, but some of the ones that this bond is going to finance are neighborhood conservation program improvements that are designed by neighborhoods to, to bring improvements to their communities. But the Long Bridge Aquatics Center is a part of this bond sale, the new Lubber Run Community Center, the improvements to Jenny Dean Park. Those are among the big county projects that are part of the bond sale. And then on the school side, this is how they're uh, funding the uh, programs uh, that are going to operate beginning in the f in next fall. Next fall, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think so. This fall? Where, no. Next fall. This ne fall. Fall 2020. When is it? Is it 2020? <laughs> Whenever it <laughs> is. Know. Whenever it is. I think it's this fall. Yeah. No, it's this fall. Yeah. We've got um, the the Heights uh, building, which is the Roslyn building that's okay. going to house the H.B. Woodlawn and Stratford programs as well as um, what they're doing at Stratford Middle School, uh, formerly Stratford Middle School, which is now Dorothy Ham yeah, middle, school. middle School. So these are the projects that this bond sale is actually bringing to It's actually fruition. Stratford Junior High. Stratford then it was H.B. Woodlawn, there and now go. it's that a middle school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's part of this whole transition changing sure. kind of theme, which is sure. it was, it's, it's exciting. And bonds are the way, I mean, it's it's kind of like a mortgage on a house. It's a way we get things and we get these projects going, and but we, we couldn't afford to do them if we had to have all the money right up front. Um, but we're getting continue to get great bond ratings good insurance yeah, yeah good good rates um, which is just a way to keep us keep us growing it's uh, right. it's exciting yeah yeah bond, bonds aren't that interesting but what we do <laughs> the projects with them, I, know, that, I know that's but interesting. yeah that's what I was getting to that's, there with that's the, really the things we're able to do with those that's yeah <laughs> yeah yeah all right. Yeah. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of another County Board Wrap-Up. Christian Libby, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us that little behind-the-scenes look at the actions the board took at its May meeting. We look forward to chatting with the board members again next month with the June County Board Wrap-Up. Remember, all of the County Board meetings are open to the public and live-streamed and archived on our website. That's arlingtonva.us and just search County Board. And if you want to tell us what you think of these and other issues, visit topics.arlingtonva.us slash engage. I'm Kara O'Donnell, and we'll see you next month right here on County Board Wrap-Up.